If this video can reach 35 likes, I will post a vine as the intro for next week's video. Every day I worry all day. I was waiting in the bushes of love. What's up, Ocean? You got Matt here, coach of your Montreal Mylotic, bringing you our week eight battle for the Pokemon for Glory next generation. Today we're facing off against the California Castform, coached by All Blitz Teemo. He is a very good battler from what I've seen. Um, he doesn't have the greatest record in the world. If I can remember off the top of my head, I believe he is 3-4, and four, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember right now. Anyways, but he is a good battler and he has a very nice team. He's got a couple uh, interesting Pokemon there, namely being the cast form, his mascot. Um, let's see if he brings it actually, but let's get into what he could possibly bring because he's got a nice team. But uh, I'll, I'll just say right now, he does have the cast form. So. That being said, what is the weirdest looking Pokemon for you? For me, Castform is definitely up there. It is extremely weird looking. So, uh, I mean, yeah, what, what is it? What's the weirdest looking Pokemon? Anyway, so here we go. We have our opponent. Our opponent has the Kartana, Infernape, Sableye, Galvantula, Quagsire, Castform, Mega Altaria, Clefable, Steelix, Cloyster, Oricorio, and the Normalium Z. So the Normalium Z is, uh, well, I mean, you can pop Hyper Beam on anything and hit for like 200 base power, which is very scary. Um, yeah, I mean, he can pack Double Edge on something, hit very scary, hit very hard over there. I mean, normal Z moves are very scary because a lot of uh, status moves can be normal type, and uh, I mean, you never know what what could happen with those. But moving on, though, we have the Celesteela, the Rotom Wash, Crocodile, Snorlax, Alolan Marowak, Roselia, Mew, Raikou, Rivambi, Ditto, and the Como. -Oh. Um, still have yet to bring Roselia. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we also have the Steelium Z, guys, and the Steelium Z is a very good uh, Z Crystal for us, especially in this matchup, because our opponent has two fairies that are very strong, and uh, no real good special wall outside of that, so, yeah. Anyways, so let's get into what we actually brought. So to start off, we have Wall Ryan this week. Um, it is Flash Cannon, Giga Drain, Air Slash, and Atomize. The speed is there so that after plus two, we outspeed a Kartana, um, and... Of course, if he is um, Choice Scarf, we want on speed, but that's why we have webs. So that's but that's that's why that's there. We then have uh, the Akaberry, just in case we do set up our Autonomize and the Infernape comes in before we get up webs. Um, we can live a hit, live a Flare Blitz, live a Flamethrower, and still fire off a ton of damage. Um, yeah, Flash Cannon hits everything super hard. Giga Drain is there for the Quagsire, Air Slash, and Giga basically our stab options hit everything for at least neutral damage, which is awesome. The only issue I could possibly see with this uh, Bring would be if he brought a Oricorio. I think it's Pow Pow, the one with the electric pom poms, the electric type basically. So, uh, yeah, that's what that's there for. We then have Metal's Top, our Rotom Wash. This is a very standard defensive Rotom. Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, Defog, Pain Split. Pain Split there for longevity. Defog there to get rid of our opponent's webs. Defog there to get rid of, rid of rocks because rocks are a pain in the ass. Uh, Volt Switch and Hydro Pump is all we really need. Um, yeah, just it's a decent switch into a couple things, but I'm really not looking forward to see how this thing can do. It's just, honestly, I didn't feel like bringing Snorlax because I, he has an Infernape, he has a Cortana, both learned very powerful fighting type moves, so I didn't want to deal with that, and uh, I didn't feel like um, a little Marowak would be good enough defensively to uh, take hits from everything else, so I needed to stick with Rotom Wash. Next though, we have Rockwall, our Ribombi, Moonblast, Baton Pass, Calm Mind, and Sticky Web. Basically, this set is, is set up so that we can just get up webs and hit things hard with Moonblast. The Baton Pass and Calm Mind are just there as a uh, little bit extra. Like it's, it's like, let's say... Let's say we can afford to get up a Calm Mind somehow, and uh, we just Baton Pass out into maybe our Mew, maybe our Rotom, maybe our Como, maybe our Celesteela. The only thing that really wouldn't work to be um, to get that Baton Pass would be the um, Ditto. Now the reason I'm running um, Calm Mind instead of Quiver Dance is because, of course, Quiver Dance raises your speed, and you can't pass speed in this league. I believe uh, you can't even pass speed alone. So. Yeah, that's that. But, uh, I mean, this is a good set. The only goal of it is just to get up webs this week and potentially take something down to a Sash. Um, I mean, we outspeed everything on his team, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. We can power off fire. We can fire off powerful move blasts. And, uh, yeah. We then have our choice card Ditto. I'm not going to say too much about it. This should be like that. Um, so we have enough EVs. We have EVs to make IVs, I should say, to make it so that we have Hidden Power Ice, uh, not Hidden Power Dragon. Next up, though, we have Julius Fave, the Culberberry Holding Mew. Yeah, Julia just raised her arms up saying, yeah, that's me. Um, we have Calm Mind, Roost, Psychic, and Flamethrower. This Mew is meant to sweep our opponent, basically. Culverberry is there for the uh, for the knockoff from the Kartana or the Night Slash. Um, if he is Scarf, then he will outspeed us, and even after Sticky Web, I should say. And um, he'll be able to take us out with the knockoff. I really don't want to deal with him wearing us down. But uh, Psychic and Flamethrower hit everything on his team. If he didn't have the Save Light, I would just run Psychic, and I would be able to run, like... Dual dance, and that would be really cool. I'd run, I'd run like Calm Mind, I'd run like uh, Rock Polish, something like that. 
Anyways, that's uh, not the case though, but we have a very strong music speed. The speed is there for the Oricorio. I originally had it outspeed uh, the Mega Altaria, but I Oricorio came to one of the matches and it kind of was annoying, so I need to make sure that I actually brought enough speed to outspeed it. So yeah. And then finally we have uh, another potential sweeper this week. Uh, I believe this is the third week in a row where Brain has a sweeper. We have Como, Sohan's Dragon, Rock Polish, Clanging Scales, Flamethrower, and Flash Cannon. Uh, Flash Cannon with the Zillium Z does not Oko the Mega Altaria if he has um, any defense, any HP I should say, um, and it does not Oko the Clefable if he's defensive. So it's really just there if, let's say, let's say I go for the Flamethrower uh, on something and then he switches out into his Fairy type, then we'll be able to kill him with the uh, Flash Cannon, with the Z Flash Cannon. So we have Rock Polish there, our speed is there, I believe we outspeed a Scarf Kartana at the plus two right away. I believe that's what it is. Um, I could be wrong, but it's, it also could just be that, no, it's we outspeed the uh, Mega Altaria 100% of the time if he's jolly or timid. So that's that. We also have Soundproof there, so that hidden power, not hidden powers, um, Hyper Voices are immune, and uh, Bug Buzzes from the Galvantula are immune. I believe that's the only two sound boost moves he gets. Um, I think that's it, actually. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's it. Oh, Snarl from the Sable, I guess if you wanna be that guy. Anyway, so that's our team, guys. Um, oh, after picking up a loss last week, hopefully we can come back and uh, well, redeem ourselves and continue our strong push. We are 6-1. Hopefully we can push that to 7-1, guys. And stick around for the battle. Alright, guys, we are back with the battle. As you can see on your screen, he brought the Infernape, Clefable, Cast Form, Sableye, Galvantula, and the Mega Altaria. No Kartana is really interesting. Um, I'm kind of worried about the Cast Form, even though it has only base 70s all around, just because I don't really know what it wants to do. So, yeah, and uh, I'm, if you skip the team builder, I brought the um, Sash lead Ribombi, I brought a Setup Sweeping um, Delstila, a Defensive Ronin Wash, a Scarf Ditto, a uh, Setup Sweeping Special Como, and a Setup Sweeping. Uh, new. So a lot of setup for us this weekend. Everything is special, by the way, which I didn't notice uh, until basically I was having the battle. So let's get into the battle. I'm going to lead it off with my Ribbon B here. Um, I don't know how long this is going to last, so I'm going to skip forward. I think, okay, yeah, it was a longer intro. So I'm going to lead off with my Ribbon B here. I don't know when it's going to start. I don't want to skip it. There we go. So we are challenged by Timo, and uh, he is going to actually lead off with his Infernape. And um, I'm going to say it right now, we had to replay this game like five times it was insane so um like there's gonna be some funky turns because of the replays but the first two turns are uh, exactly how it happened so i go for the sticky web here and he reveals the substitute which is kind of interesting so at least i know he's not scarfed and he's uh probably not sashed so i go for the moon blast here we're able to break his sub and i don't know what item he is going to be he's not leftovers so that's kind of interesting and he goes for the flare blitz right here and at this point we dc'd <laughs> so uh that's one dc that's fine though and uh Anyways, we then reconnect and we play the exact same thing again and he goes to the mock punch and he takes me out. I didn't, I didn't think he was going to have the mock punch, but it's fine because I can really threaten everything he has to uh, defog, so I want to make sure I can descend my road here, go for the bolt switch, as he actually sends in the Clefable here. And I didn't want to risk him potentially being the ceiling, ceiling barrier, that's why I didn't go into my Como here and I went actually into my Mew as we do a ton of damage um, in the original battle because we had de we DC'd again later on. Um, I got a less, I got less of a roll than that. But I go into my Mew here. It's not shiny, unfortunately. Uh, but I go for the Calm Mind, and I just want to see what he does. And he is actually going to reveal a very interesting tech, and uh, it kind of helps him out a lot. And that's the knockoff, being a dark type move, well, take away my Culper Berry, which is interesting. So we're out without our Culper Berry. I'm gonna go for the Psychic here. I want to see if this thing is um, unaware or Magic Guard. That's the big thing because if it is um, unaware then I need to be careful. Uh, in the original game, well, once we got to this point after that, I actually got a spit-up drop there, and he got a special attack drop here, so that's kind of interesting. I will say, though, that because of, uh, uh, what is it called? Because of um, unaware, if he was unaware, then I would be doing more damage to him, even though we got a special attack drop, because the because unaware, it ignores the stat drops, too. So if you if you have unaware and you intimidate a Pokemon, it really doesn't make a difference. It's like they're at neutral. So yeah, and, uh, but his special defense drops, they stay. So that's that. Anyways, I go for the Roost here, I just want to see what he does again, I can't lose too much HP. And uh, he goes for the Thunder Wave, which is very interesting because, well, that's going to really stop our sweeping chances. But uh, basically the plan is I don't want to, I want I want to take out a few Pokemon before I lose my Mew. So he gets his uh, health back as he is paralyzed from Synchronize, from Synchronize, I can get paralyzed here. He's going to go for the T-Wave here because uh, in the original game he actually got paralyzed and I didn't, so I was able to get up another Calm Mind. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to play it out a bit. and. It's going to be kind of interesting, but I got my Calm Mind here, and I believe he's going to go for another Thunder Wave, just try and, uh, just to try and, well, weaken me, I guess. We'll try and avoid those turns that uh, he was paralyzed. So, 
you know, basically just kind of replay. He got some health back from the left, from the left over. It really doesn't matter. I go for the Psychic here, and we knock him to about um, 40%, and he gets paralyzed now. And I will say, I'm going to go for the Flamethrower here because, um, in, the original game, in the original game, because of the Spit F drop, I was able to knock him down um, to about 30% to 25%, and that was in range for a Psychic to kill him all like 100% of the time. So I needed to do that. And uh, yeah, so I, I do that move. I can't remember what he went for here. But I go for the Flamethrower. And this knocks him down to about where he needs to be, a bit less, but uh, I mean, it's not a big deal. So he goes to the Moonblast here, and uh, he's now going to be able to switch into his Sableye as I go for the um, Moonblast, because that was original, not the Moonblast, the Psychic. I go for the Psychic here, and he's actually going to switch out into his Sableye. And um, Stitch is a great name for it, I love, I love Stitch as a name for a Sableye. But uh, this thing is kind of scary, kind of not. I get paralyzed, so it's not a big deal. I just gone for the Psychic. At this point, I'm going to go for the Flamethrower. In the original game, I got the Burn, actually, and uh, here I don't get the Burn, and Knock Off does a lot more damage than it should. So I got very lucky in the original game, but uh, we're kind of able to play around it. So I go for the, uh, I go for the recovery, the roost here as he goes for the recover. And at this point, um, he's basically going to switch out as I go for the calm mine because um, I'll explain why later on in the game. But he's going to switch out here. I'm going to go for my, um, what was it? I go for my calm mine here. Yeah, I think so. So I go for the calm mine. He's going to switch out into Carolina, his Clefable, and uh, I'm going to go for the psychic the next turn. And basically. Basically, uh, I broke through uh, in the original match, so hopefully I break through here. I don't know if I did or not, but I go for the psychic, and uh, yeah, it should it should take him out, and we should be up, I believe, six to five. So I'm sorry about all the like replaying guys, but it happened quite a bit, and the match was kind of different. Anyways, he goes into his infernape here, and he's gonna go for the flare, but it won't KO me from this range. So as long as he gets, as long as he doesn't get a crit, and actually in one match he did get a crit when we were when we were recreating so uh he okoed me and uh here we actually live the hit and we go for the psychic and we finish off the infernape so muse put in the work at this point he's gonna have to go into his um his what is it galvantula to take us out and he's gonna go he's gotta go with the bug buzz that's the only thing that will take us out from this range because we are plus three on our spdf so i'm gonna switch out now and i go into my como here predicting the incoming bug buzz of course we are immune to that so uh Sohan's Dragon comes out, and he's actually going to reveal the nice little tech being the Lunge. So very interesting, um, I think we would have lived that if, with our Mew, but, I mean, who knows. So, I'm going to now go for the Clanging Scales, because Clanging Scales hits everything super hard on his team, except for the uh, Clefable, and I didn't think he was going to go into his, uh, and it hits everything super hard on his team, basically, because his Altaria is Mega Vault. But, uh, he's going to live that hit, and uh, in the original game, he was able to like recover up a little bit, uh, and play some shenanigans like that, but he uh, he's just going to go for the Sunny Day here, and uh, Sunny Day will finish... So they will take, basically make the cast form into a uh, fire type, and I mean fire types aren't scary for my team. So I go for the second clanging skills. We're at minus two now. At this point, I want him to think I'm potentially uh, scarfed or I'm potentially uh, specs or whatever it may be. But he goes into Nimbus, his Altaria, and at this point, I'm gonna reveal my Z move. Um, it could KO him if he has no HP investment. It will it will be like a roll my favorite. I think the min the min amount of health is like 97 and a half. So I go for the corkscrew crash right here. This is a great animation. I, I don't know if this is like the first time we run. We've actually used our uh, Z move effectively this season. I know we brought it a couple times, but it hasn't really done anything. So Corkscrew Crash comes out. It does a lot of damage to the Solitaria. Does it take it out? Sadly, it does not. Does he reveal the return? No, he doesn't. He didn't have the Moon Blast either, so he had to go for the Fire Blast because uh, of the Soundproof. So he didn't prepare enough for a Soundproof uh, Como, which is great for us. I mean, I mean, it's really good for us. But uh, I go for the Flash Cannon here, and I really want to go for the um, for the Flamethrower, but. Flamethrower just wasn't guaranteed to take him out, especially even in the sun, which is crazy. So I go for the Flash Cannon, and at this point here, we actually get a crit and a spit after drop. So I'm going to say this right now. Cast form in the original matchup that we had, in the like when we got to this point in the last game, he did not get the, spe the special defense drop, and he did not get the, um, the what is it called? The crit. So I would go for Clanging Scales, and Clanging Scales would not take him out, and then he would burn his Z move. And he would actually, because it was Weather Ball, he would actually reveal it would be a Fire Z move. We would live it, though, but it's crazy to see how how Cast Form would have basically dented our team. So because of that, I want to make sure that he lives. So I went for the Flash Cannon, or the Flamethrower here. And uh, Flamethrower will not take him out, even in the sun. But, uh, well, we crit him. So, yeah. I mean, it's okay. We would be at a lot less health. But because of that, I'm basically just going to sack off my Como here, just to make it, uh, I guess, bearer. So... I'm gonna sack off my combo here. I go for the clanging skills. He's gotta go for fire blast. It's the only thing he can do to hit us. So he brings us down. Thankfully, he got a crit there, so he doesn't have to use as much PP. And he burns us there as well, so that's really, really useful. So uh, he's gonna go for the fire blast one more time. I'm gonna go for the clanging skills. But wouldn't you know it? He misses this turn. So yeah. Anyways, he's gonna go for the for it one more time. Hopefully, he lands it this time. Clanging skills again, and I sack off my combo 
really unfortunate I get to do that, um, because honestly my play before, because he actually had gone into his um, Galvantula to take us out, I'm going to pause it right here though, so he had gone to his Galvantula to take us out after the, uh, after the cast form had fainted, and that's when we could DC'd, and Ga uh, Galvantula would have survived the Clanging Scales or the Flamethrower, he was out of the sun at that point, so uh, yeah, and then uh, he would be able to take us out with the Discharge or the Lunge, and uh, he'll reveal his last two moves here. Um, but yeah, like, it was kind of tough to, like, recreate all this, but I went to my Rotom here at this point, and, uh, I could've gone to something else, and, just, like, I could've, I could've gone to my Rotom before on the Galvantula, but it's fine. I go for the Hydro Pump here, as the Galvantula comes in, takes the Sticky Webs, and, uh, hopefully we outspeed it. If he's max special, if he's max speed, I'm sorry, we won't outspeed. There's no way. Uh, so I go for the Hydro Pump here, I don't think we have enough speed. That's just it. And then, uh, I go for the Hydro Pump one more time here. He actually sets up the Light Screen, and because of that, you're gonna see, he lives on a sliver of health. Like, almost nothing. Uh, what are you gonna do? I go for the Volt Switch now. Um, I see he sets up a Sticky Web, so his his uh, moveset was Volt Switch, sorry, uh, Lunge, Discharge, Light Screen, and uh, Sticky Web. So I go, I go in Volt Switch, Rotom takes the kill, and I go straight into my Celesteela, and I want to allow this thing to get the kill. We are gonna outspeed the Altaria, we do have enough speed for that. So Nimbus comes out, and it will die to a Flash Cannon for sure. So I click that Flash Cannon, and uh, at this point, we should pick up a nice 4-0 win over the California Cast Forms. So I'm sorry about the one, the length of the video, because I mean there was a lot of, uh, well, like, recreations, and me just talking about what happened in the previous matches, but, uh, I mean, it, it happens, what are you gonna do? It's not, it's like the, it's not the first time we've had DCs during one of our games, uh, it won't be the last time, it just, it happens, what are you gonna do? Um, I do want to say though, GG to Timo, uh, he did, he played a very good game. Um, I'm, a couple interesting sets, being a cast form, uh, interesting plays, he kind of allowed me to set up for free on my Mew, uh, and that really did hinder him. If he had gone into the, uh, the Infernape at any point in time, he would have likely been able to really dent it, and then gone to something else like the Galvantula, or even the Altaria, who's still floating, and then started punishing me there. But, uh, I mean, honestly, he, he played a good game. So, I really think my matchup was a bit, like, really, really... It was much better than his, ish, I should say. So, uh, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already. We are closing in on 230 subscribers, so make sure you go ahead and do that. Make sure to join the Ocean. That's my personal Discord server. is linked in the description below. Also, follow me on Twitter. You get sneak peeks of uh, upcoming content that I'm releasing, whether it's top 10s. Um, you, get, like, you get to see the thumbnails for the different battles before I post them. and uh, Before I post the video, I should say. And... Uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, like, comment, subscribe, share, go check out our opponent, his link is in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you all next time.